Okay guys, hello and uh, welcome to this little video. I'm hoping this can be a uh, acceptable substitute for us not being in class today. I do appreciate you putting up with uh, my absence and uh, so I'll just kind of walk you through what I'm up to here uh, in my home office doing the USB build. Okay, so I started off my day by just getting my USB, uh, taking it apart, laying out all the pieces, taking photos with my phone and emailing those photos to myself okay and so if we look here in my email I've got emails with just multiple photos of uh, the USB and then I download those using this download button and they show up inside of my download folder as a uh, zip file I then created a folder on my desktop for the project inside of there I've got the original zip file and then I just right click on that zip file and go extract all which takes all the photos and puts them into its own folder okay alright so I'm gonna just double click on the folder and show you kinda of some of the images that I've got here not exactly the world's best product photography but these are just reference images to have on hand in case I don't have my pieces with me or in case I just need a little quick visual reference to kind of keep me on track um, it's just always good to have something like this as a backup <clears throat> All right, so I figure for today I'm not going to get too ambitious, but I am just going to quickly take note of how many pieces are involved in this product. So we have the kind of the, the outer shell. Uh, we have this slider piece right here. We have the slider tray, and then we have the PC board. Okay, so I'm going to create an individual SolidWorks part file for each of these pieces, and I'm going to... Uh, build each one of these pieces in their own part file and then later we'll put them together into an assembly file okay so uh, in class what I was hoping to do was build one of the three pieces and so I think what we'll do is we'll start with this one this is the easiest one and so the very first thing I'm gonna do is put this into Photoshop I'm gonna crop it I'm going to check the resolution of the image and I'm gonna resize the image to something a little bit more uh, in line with what the actual product is okay so I've got Photoshop open right here and I'm just gonna go open and I'll scroll to my folder and I will get that one image and we will start the process of checking the resolution and cropping it to size Photoshop's taking its time this morning but here we go alright so I'll just grab a selection tool and I'll just draw a nice tight crop around that crop that file go up to image I'll go image size I'll change the resolution to something like 300 and then I will begin the process of actually measuring my piece and that's going to require my uh, digital calipers which I have right here on my desk excuse me for the sound All right. So as I turn on my calipers and set them to millimeters and just give a nice basic dimension, we're going to start off the process by just blocking it out. So I have 39.03 millimeters, 39.2, uh, as I kind of level it out, 39.17, so 39.2. As, as I mentioned in class, you're going to be measuring your pieces and you're going to get multiple measurements depending on a variety of things. And you're going to have to put your designer hat on for a little bit and just kind of, you know, take a stand and pick a dimension that you like. So 39.2 millimeters is exactly what um, it is from the top to the bottom here. And so I might just change this to millimeters and set the height to uh, a little bit bigger than that. So I'll just say 60 millimeters there you go that's gonna make a really small little image okay but it's all good <clears throat> and I'll just go save as and I'm gonna save this back in my USB folder I'm probably going to um, make a new folder just for um, images and I'm gonna save this this is thing this thing is called I'm calling it the um, the slider okay and I'm gonna to say top view like that okay good good okay so that's it for Photoshop there we go and now it's time to jump over to 
SolidWorks, which is here. And we're just going to create a new file just for that slider. So it's going to be a part file, and we'll go OK. All right. And uh, in this situation, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build right off of the top plane. Or at least I'm going to, since I'm dealing with the top view, I'm going to start up a sketch on the top plane. And I'm going to insert the photo from Photoshop into SolidWorks. So if you remember how to do that, fantastic. If you don't, you have to first start up a sketch for the image to live on. And then you go insert. And then you go, sorry, is it insert? It's not. <laughs> It is uh, tools, sketch tools, down here to sketch picture. All right, that's going to bring up your dialog box here, and you can navigate to where you kept your images. And here is my slider top view. Okay, fantastic. All right, so that's that. And now I have the image inside SolidWorks. It is right here inside this sketch, and I'm just going to exit out of that sketch. Okay. Then let's take a look over here at the design tree and um, you can notice that you've got sketch one here. Maybe you just double click on that and it'll allow you to rename that sketch and you can just say top, top view. Okay, and then just take a look at how this works. There's a little triangle next to your sketch and you can unfold that and there's your image. You double click on the image inside of the sketch and it brings you back to the property manager for that image. And this is the place where you can go to set things like the transparency, where you click on full image, and then you can set the, sl the slider transparency to whatever you like. You've also got some flip buttons if you need to flip this. And then you've also got some positioning buttons here that will give you the coordinates of where the image lives inside the 3D world of SolidWorks. Okay, So I just like to drop my transparency down a little bit. And I'm realizing that I did make one quick little mistake here, and uh, that was that I didn't lay down any sort of uh, guidelines or center lines or measured uh, line work uh, that I could compare my image to. So I think what I'm actually going to do is, excuse me, my dog is howling if you hear that in the background. Um, I think what I'm going to do is grab my timeline bar here, and I'm just going to pull it up over the image that I've inserted. That's going to cause the image to go away. And it's kind of like, I, I've mentioned this in class a few times, it's like going back in time to before you made this maneuver. And I'm going to go up here to sketch, and I'm going to create a sketch on the top plane. I'll hit sketch button. I'll open this up. I'll go top plane. And then I'm going to grab just a super simple little center line. And I'm going to go right here to my origin and hover over my origin, draw a nice straight line up. There you go. I'll hit right click hit select to drop that tool. I'll go to smart dimension and this is the part where I'm going to uh, type in the height measurement for this piece which was uh, 39.2 I think. Okay, there we go. And I'll just drop that. Alright, fantastic. And now I can go over here to my timeline again and I can pull this down. <clears throat> okay, and we can take a look at um, how close uh, Photoshop was able to get the image uh, to the actual measurement, right? We had set it to something like 60 millimeters. So just a good lesson to learn that Photoshop's not going to get you very close, uh, but it'll get you somewhere in the neighborhood. So this is the actual size of our piece, this line we just drew, and this is the size of our image. So we have to scale this image down in. SolidWorks in order to get it uh, uh, get it into the right position. Okay, so like I said, um, you open up the sketch here to get to the picture. Double click on the picture. You'll get your transform box around it, and you can just grab this thing, and you can kind of scale this into position. Really tiny. Kind of get this a little bit more front and center. Zoom in on it. All right, and I'm just trying to match the height. This is going to take a second. Take some, some kind of just takes a little bit of patience. And everything is flexible. Everything is loose. It is okay to just get close 
because we're going to build the precision into our model. So this is again just reference geometry here, no big deal. I think that looks about right, so I'm going to call it just about like that. Okay. All right, good. Okay. <clears throat> All right, 39.2, we are off to the races. We've taken photos of the piece we're gonna build. We've inserted those photos into SolidWorks. We've resized the photos so that they match the size of the piece we're trying to build. And we are very good to move on to the very next step, okay? So this first video, this is 10 minutes long. I'm gonna shut it down and I'm gonna start up another video for you. And I want you to go from there, okay? So our goal for today is gonna be to build this piece, all right? In my email, I've got some other uh, some other views of the piece itself. USB two here. You can see that I uh, I took some pictures. Here's a picture of <clears throat> the underside of that piece. And uh, again, this is just a reference photo. And I've got the piece sitting right in front of me. So really, I'm going to be using that as my guide. But I do have pictures of it as a backup. Okay. Okay, so try to get yourself at least to that point where you're here in SolidWorks and you're ready to start building. And uh, once you get to that point, we're going to crank it up. So get your calipers ready and we'll go from there. All right. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next one.